Welcome to Somali Nexus, where we journey into the heart of the Horn of Africa, unearthing stories that connect us all. I'm thrilled to have you with us today for a truly fascinating episode, where we explore the deep genetic ties between Ethiopia and Somalia, two nations often seen as separate, yet intricately woven together through history. Today, we're diving into the genetic narratives that illuminate shared ancestry between these two rich cultures, exploring how ancient migrations, cultural exchanges, and historical events have left their mark on modern-day Ethiopians and Somalis. From the cradle of humanity in the Omo Valley to the rise of empires and trade routes that cross the Red Sea, the roots of our shared past run deep. The genetic connections between these peoples stretch back thousands of years revealing a story of unity, resilience, and adaptation that defies the boundaries we see today. Whether through the spread of language, religion, or commerce, Ethiopia and Somalia have long been part of an intertwined history, one that is only now being revealed by modern genetics. In today's episode, we'll explore how these ancient interactions are encoded in our DNA, how they shape not only the physical traits of the people in the Horn of Africa, but also our cultural identities. Get ready for a conversation that challenges conventional boundaries, revealing how DNA can tell a story of connection, resilience, and mutual heritage. Whether you're tuning in from Ethiopia, Somalia, or anywhere else, today's episode promises to offer a fresh perspective on our collective story. So, sit back, relax, and let's uncover the genetic bridges that bind us together in ways you might never have expected. If you're fascinated by the history of the Horn of Africa and want to dive deeper, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, share this episode with others, and let us know what you think. Join the conversation and continue exploring with us on Somali Nexus. When you hear Ethiopia and Somalia, what first comes to mind for most people? I guess it's probably two distinct nations, right? Different languages, separate borders, often quite distinct identities in our modern world. But what if I told you that beneath all these sorts of contemporary divisions, their genetic histories tell an astonishingly different story? Today, we're doing a deep dive into the genetic research, really trying to uncover the profound historical interconnections the ones woven into the very DNA of the peoples of Ethiopia and Somalia. Our mission really is to challenge those modern ideas, ethnic boundaries, by revealing this shared ancestry that goes back millennia. This deep dive, it draws from extensive genetic narratives, historical accounts too, painting this picture of the Horn of Africa as well, a captivating mosaic. Ancient migrations, vibrant cultural exchanges, powerful civilizations. It's a genuine crossroads of human history and genetic heritage. And as we're going to find out, the DNA of Ethiopians and Somalis is like a living testimony to these ancient, really intertwined links. It truly is, yeah. This region, it's so much more than just lines on a map. It's this dynamic stage where human populations have interacted for thousands upon thousands of years. And that's created a genetic legacy that, well, it defies any simplistic categorization. Okay, so let's start right there in unpacking that core assumption, this idea that Ethiopians and Somalians are entirely separate. Why do you think the modern political, the linguistic differences, why do they so often overshadow these deeper historical connections? That's a really crucial point. The concept of rigid ethnic boundaries in the Horn, especially as we understand them today, it's been largely misunderstood. I'd say what's truly fascinating when you really dig into the genetic evidence is how, for millennia, populations from the Arabian Peninsula, the Levant, various parts of the African continent, they haven't just passed through. They've continuously interacted, settled, and contributed to the region's incredibly diverse genetic landscape. Think about ancient empires like Aksum. It wasn't confined to today's borders at all. Or the sprawling Islamic caliphates. These weren't just political entities. They were pivotal centers of exchange, drawing people, and importantly, their genes from across vast distances. So, if we could kind of mentally strip away those modern borders, what surprising patterns start to emerge when we look at those genetic threads? 
What does that tapestry actually show us about how these seemingly distinct nations came to be so intertwined? It shows us that understanding these connections, it genuinely requires us to look beyond borders. We have to view genetic ancestry not as some linear progression, like one group simply came from another, but instead as this complex shared heritage shaped by centuries, millennia, really, of ongoing migrations and exchanges. It's not about one group originating from the other. It's about a long, continuous history of intermingling. Right. Speaking of intricate tapestries, let's maybe trace some of those ancestral echoes. Now let's dive into the Ethiopian genetic story first. Ethiopia. I mean, even today, it's renowned for its incredible diversity. A remarkable array of ethnicities, languages, cultures. How does this diversity show up in its genetic makeup? The genetic diversity within Ethiopia is, yeah, it's remarkable, truly. When we examine key genetic markers, things like haplogroups. Yes, haplogroups remind us quickly what those are. Think of them as a sort of genetic surname, if you like, passed down through generations. They're specific markers on the Y chromosome for paternal lines or in mitochondrial DNA for maternal lines. And they reveal these deep connections. We find both ancient links to the wider African continent and also more recent genetic contributions from populations in the Middle East, even Asia. These markers, they don't just exist in isolation. They tell a really detailed story of migration, interaction, demographic shifts stretching back tens of thousands of years. Wow. And this brings us to a place that's just immensely significant for the whole human story, doesn't it? The Omo Valley in southern Ethiopia often called the cradle of humanity because of those incredibly ancient hominid fossils found there. But from a purely genetic perspective, what makes the Omo Valley such an important crossroads? Exactly. The Omo Valley is where some of the oldest Homo sapiens fossils dating back over 200,000 years have been discovered. So it's pivotal for understanding our origins. 200,000 years, that's incredible. It is. But beyond that, it really served as an important genetic crossroads for human populations as they began their great migrations out of Africa, some moving northward towards Egypt and the Mediterranean, others dispersing southward into sub-Saharan Africa. And this constant flow led to what geneticists call ancient admixing events right there in Ethiopia. Admixing events. So like different groups, meeting and mixing. Precisely. Imagine these early groups of people meeting, intermarrying. Over generations, their children carry a blend of both sets of genes. Over time, this continuous blending created this unique genetic signature, a real mosaic reflecting those ancient interactions. You find traces of African, Arab, even Mediterranean genes all woven together. So it's really not just a single story, is it? It's like layers upon layers of genetic input from different migrations over vast timescales. You mentioned, for instance, ancient Semitic speaking groups migrating into the highlands, maybe from the Arabian Peninsula originally, leaving a clear genetic imprint among groups like the Amhara and Tigray today. And then alongside them, you have Cushitic speaking populations whose languages are native to the horn, bringing their own distinct genetic patterns. How did these different linguistic and presumably genetic groups interact? They interacted continuously. That's the key. The presence of both Semitic and Cushitic linguistic families reflects these distinct migratory waves that built Ethiopia's genetic tapestry. And the Aksumite Empire, which flourished from around, say, 100 AD to 940 AD, gives us a fascinating window into this interaction in action. It spanned parts of modern-day Ethiopia, Eritrea, Sudan, Yemen. A huge area. Huge. And its extensive trade and cultural exchanges with Arabian peoples, Mediterranean peoples profoundly shaped the genetic makeup of the region. It created a genuine melting pot. That intricate genetic tapestry in Ethiopia is truly fascinating. So let's shift focus slightly. Yeah. Does Somalia's story, which is often perceived maybe as more uniform because of the shared language and culture, does it reveal a similar complexity, similar interconnectedness? It absolutely does, yes. Despite those perceptions of homogeneity, Somali genetic history is equally complex, equally dynamic. You have to look at Somalia's geographical position right on the southeastern edge of the Horn. That location made it a vital meeting point, a nexus where early Cushitic speaking populations, who were already there, blended with later migrations coming in from the Arabian Peninsula and North Africa. 
This historical reality is. Well, it's clearly reflected in their genetics. Okay, so we see those deeper Cushitic roots common across the horn. But how significant are those later Arabian and Levantine genetic contributions you mentioned? And what specific historical events are those connections likely pointing towards? Trade, religion. That's a crucial point. We find significant, measurable genetic contributions from Arabian and Levantine ancestors. These are distinct markers that correlate really strongly with migrations from those regions, particularly during periods of intense trade along the, the Red Sea and Indian Ocean, and definitely linked to the spread of Islam. These aren't just abstract cultural influences. They indicate a very real movement of people, intermarriage, not just goods moving along ancient maritime routes. Somalia's coast, with its bustling ports, was a key link between Africa and the Arabian Peninsula for centuries, facilitating this continuous exchange with places like Yemen, Oman. Fascinating. And beyond these external influences, what do the genes tell us about how Somalis themselves, you know, adapted and thrived, especially in what could be pretty challenging arid environments over there? That's another remarkable part of the story. The Somali genetic profile also tells the story of resilience and adaptation. Studies have actually identified unique genetic markers related to their ability to thrive in dry, arid environments. These are traits that have likely emerged, been selected for over thousands of years of living in the challenging climate of the Horn. Like what kind of traits? Well, some specific examples include genetic markers that seem to offer increased resistance to endemic diseases, like malaria and also tuberculosis. It's really a testament to human endurance. You could say it's literally coded into their DNA. And we should also probably mention the historical migration and diaspora of Somali people, right? Both within the Horn and further afield, like into the Arabian Peninsula. That must contribute even more to this genetic diversity. Indeed. Yeah. The Somali diaspora, both historical and recent, carries traces of Middle Eastern and Arabian ancestry further illustrating how their genetic story is one of constant movement and connection. Their historical role as that maritime link between continents means their genes reflect this legacy of widespread interaction. It's not a story of isolation. Okay, so when we start to weave all these different threads together, the deep histories of both Ethiopia and Somalia, we arrive at what feels like a truly compelling revelation, an undeniable connection really a remarkable degree of shared ancestry, despite what modern ethnic or national boundaries might suggest. This is where the specific genetic evidence becomes so, so powerful. Both populations share the presence of common haplogroups, like E1, B1, B, and J, for instance. And those genetic surnames we talked about. Yeah, exactly. And finding the same ones like E1, B1, B, or J, quite prevalent in both Ethiopians and Somalis. Well, it's not just a coincidence. It's like finding pages from a shared family album. It strongly suggests their ancestors were part of the same major migratory waves that moved through and populated the Horn of Africa thousands of years ago. And it's not just these spec lineage markers, the Y chromosome, or mitochondrial DNA, that point to this shared heritage, is it? You mentioned autosomal DNA earlier, which gives us a much broader view of ancestry because it reflects genetic contributions from all ancestors, both parents. That also shows significant overlap. That's absolutely right. The autosomal DNA, which looks at the entire genome, really seals the deal. You could say the overlap there further underscores the shared history of intermarriage and exchange over long periods. It reflects a much wider shared genetic landscape that both populations draw from. But again, it's crucial to understand the shared heritage isn't about one group originating neatly from the other in some linear fashion. Instead, it truly reflects a long, dynamic history of continuous intermingling, shaped by those ancient trade routes, various migrations, the rise and fall of empires that crisscross the horn. It's a beautifully complex story, and it's a shared one. So let's talk implications then. What does all this mean for how we understand the Horn of Africa today? Beyond just the fascinating science itself, how do these deep genetic connections impact our view of history, of identity in the region? Well, the implications are profound, really. They fundamentally challenge that older, somewhat static view of these populations as completely distinct, separate entities throughout history. If we connect this to the bigger picture, recognizing this deeply shared genetic legacy 
it can foster a powerful sense of shared cultural heritage, too. It offers a more inclusive and, frankly, more accurate narrative of the region's past. And that, in turn, could help Ethiopians and Somalis gain a greater appreciation, perhaps for each other's cultures and histories. Seeing those common roots. It really highlights the fluidity of identity, doesn't it? Much more fluid than we often assume. The genetic evidence serves as this powerful counter-narrative to rigid ethnic or national boundaries, showing the true dynamic nature of human migration and cultural exchange over time. What does this imply for how maybe we should view national and ethnic groups today, not just there, but everywhere? It certainly encourages a more nuanced understanding of human identity generally, one that embraces these deep genetic connections and the continuous cultural exchange that has shaped literally all of us. It definitely raises an important question. If our history is so interwoven genetically, why do modern narratives so often emphasize division over connection? And furthermore, going back to those adaptive genes we talked about. Right, for arid environments and disease resistance. Yes, those genetic markers reflecting the ability of both groups to survive and thrive in challenging environments. They speak to this remarkable shared human capacity for endurance, for innovation. That's something that should perhaps inspire us all. And that's a really powerful takeaway. I think this genetic knowledge, it does more than just illuminate the past. It seems like it offers a potentially potent tool for maybe bridging some divides and building a more connected, understanding future based on that shared heritage. Ultimately, yes. The genetic narratives of Ethiopia and Somalia tell this incredible story of deep intertwined histories, histories spanning millennia. They transcend political borders. They transcend modern ethnic labels, revealing a unity that's far older than any modern concept of separation. So, I guess the thought to leave everyone with is this. Given how deeply our shared human heritage is woven into our very DNA, what new possibilities might open up? What happens when we look beyond those modern-day divisions and truly embrace the ancient connection?